for joining our tutorial on the Showrunner Hub. Today we're going to go over the scheduling capabilities of the Showrunner Hub. What you see here is the login screen of the Hub when you have a floor plan enabled. This is our demo system of Showrunner U running the Chief Elementary floor plan. You can see here we've drawn and configured all the areas in Chief Elementary. Um, I do have a few videos on how to uh, navigate Showrunner Hub floor plans, which I'll link below. But today we're going to discuss the scheduling capabilities and we will use the tags to, to go over that. What you see here is we've tagged all the areas and in this case, common areas, areas that uh, are, are tied together. And we'll use those tags to help us navigate the scheduling feature. So we'll click into the schedule and that's gonna bring up a month view calendar that we're all too familiar with. But this view is gonna show all the events that we have created and, and what time these events are triggered. And we can dig into the details in a little bit here. You can switch to a time grid view, a week view, or a day view, but we'll operate on the month view for today. And we'll just look at some of these events here. You'll see classroom. This is an event that has included the two tagged areas of school classrooms and school workrooms. This also adds specific areas, the media center, art, and music that we can choose to add specific areas in addition to those tagged areas. And what we have under this event are just simply weekday end, weekday start. This way the, the lights know when to, to fire for a weekday start and then know when to shut off for a weekday end. And then you'll see we have common areas, which is just our school corridors. And these are different events here, common areas on, janitorial hours. And then we have school master, which includes all tagged areas. And these events are simply weekday all off, weekend all off. Okay, so today as an example, we're gonna create a minimum day schedule. And what we'll do is we'll jump over to calendar capabilities. You'll see we have some built-in calendars, some custom calendars, and then uh, some custom and built-in calendar groups. And what we're gonna do to start is add a minimum day. This will be the minimum day calendar group. We're gonna create that group first, and then we will create the specific minimum day calendar. Let's call it school year uh, 2022 in this case. Once we've created that calendar, we're going to click on the calendar. You'll see it is enabled and there are three different options as far as selecting the dates that you want for this calendar. The first is a simple range. You can just choose a date range. You can go in and click on specific days or you can select a date pattern, whether it falls within one of the calendars that's already been created, whether it's on a specific month, week, you can drill into anything you want. Uh, within the date pattern. But for the demonstration today, we'll go through specific dates. And let's just say every Wednesday in January, we have a minimum day. So we've selected all four Wednesdays in January. We're simply gonna save it for minimum day school year 2022. And then we'll jump down to the minimum day calendar. And in the minimum day calendar, we're gonna add, let me, let me say that again, minimum day calendar group, we will add the um, the minimum day school year 2022 that we created. Go ahead and save that. And the calendar that we created is now under the calendar group. So when we go back to events, let's say we wanna apply the minimum day schedule to classrooms only, because generally the students have gone home but the teachers remain working. So the new event will be minimum day end in this case, which is when the school day will end. So you see when we've created the event, it hasn't fired yet. It's not enabled. So we're going to go ahead and enable it. We will click on an end time. Let's go with 1230 PM. And then we need to set up our recurrence and we want to choose weekly and calendar. And in this case, we'll go with work days. So Monday through Friday, and then it gives us the opportunity to exclude a specific calendar or include a specific calendar. And in this case, we want to exclude all school holidays because minimum day would not be applicable to a school holiday because the school will be closed, but we certainly want to include the minimum day itself. So we've put the exclusion of school holidays and the inclusion of minimum day. And now we want to tell the system what to do uh, when this event happens. So the scene to recall in this case will be off since we're closing out those uh, school rooms. 
And then as you can see, we can add all sorts of functionality beyond that. The occupancy mode, keypad state, time mode, CCT mode, shade command, plug load mode, scene, set occupied scene, set vacant scene, default on scene, default off scene. All those are available to you. But for this example, we simply want to just shut the uh, recall scene off. So we're going to save that. Click back through here. We'll toggle over to January. And what you'll see just like that is we have minimum day end at 1230 all four Wednesdays in January. So just like that, a simple example of how to set up schedules and events within the Showrunner Hub advanced scheduling feature. Uh, more to come. Please stay tuned. And thank you for watching today.